Now, everybody should be able to hear me. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, so I should, I forgot, I, I got to have a microphone, right? <laughs> yeah, so I got to have a microphone. I'm sorry about that, right? So, uh, you know, what we're talking about today is what's happening right now in crypto, right? Crypto took a hard, hard drop this morning, right? And what happened, it, it's pretty simple what happened, right? Is that, and the thing about this is we've been through, through this before, but let's get to the nuts and the bolts. Well, let's talk about what happened, right? So China decided to ban crypto every time. They, they did it before, right? They did it back in June, but what they did back then is they banned mining operations and they banned banks from using it. Now what they've done is they banned everything, everything, right? Everything. So now you can't perform any Bitcoin transactions at all without in in the country of china now so what so that's pretty bad right because china makes up a quarter of the world's population right but the thing about it here is that this is actually a good sign because it it shows us how dangerous bitcoin is to these countries and their power structures right it's because they're panicking right now that's they're, they're they don't know what to do they're like man you know we got our, our the, one of the biggest powers that a country has is the power of issuing currency right so if they, you take that power away from what, what do they have? Like, do we, how, does, how does the U.S. control other countries? Think about it. They say, they say, look, in order for you to do it, you, and if you do what we say, we'll send you money. And then, you know, and then, and then, you know, you do what we say, we'll send you money to help you with your country, right? Just like that right now, what's happening in the Senate, I mean, I'm sorry, in, the, in Congress right now, is that they're deciding on if they're going to fund Israel on some missile defense program, right? So some of them, they some want to do it, some don't, some do, but it's a it's a system of control, right? So how does the U.S. come up with this money? They just print it up and send it over there, right? But if they don't have the power to send this money anymore, think about it. What do you think is going to happen if they don't have the power to send this money? The countries lose a lot of power, so they're they're panicking, right? So one of the powers that countries that are in power right now have is their authority. Right. So what they're going to do is use their authority to push Bitcoin down. Right. That, that's all they have left, because Bitcoin, I'm telling you, at this point, is probably unstoppable. It's probably unstoppable. Right. So what's happening now is that these old countries, these people that have power before, they're trying to retain their power by putting out news and pushing it down. Now, think about this. Why didn't China to put this news out two weeks ago and Bitcoin was down. Think about it. Just think about this. I want you guys to think hard about this. And you'll see, you'll be able to move the trees and you'll be able to see the forest, right? Think about this. Why didn't China put this out a year ago when Bitcoin was down? Why didn't China put it out three weeks ago? Why do they only do it when there's a, a small bull run happening? Think about this. Why did it, does this bad news come out when Bitcoin seems to be rebounding or it's going up? Now, think about that. Now, why didn't they put it out in 2018 when it was at 10,000 for two years, basic average? Why didn't they do it then? Because they, they, because they figured out oh, it ain't no threat right now. So when it becomes a threat, oh, my God, it's actually coming back up. So we got to push this down, right? So that's exactly what's happening, right? That's exactly what's happening. And it's, you know, and I, and I can see it happening right in front of me, so I'm not worried about it as much, right? So... I'll give you guys a few seconds to ask some questions. We're going to move on to XRP and Dogecoin, right? Because, you know, I don't really like Dogecoin, but we'll talk about it, right? So good morning, uh, Stadia Gaming. Good morning, guys. I'm going to try to go live more. I kind of like going live on YouTube, but I also share it with Instagram, too, because, you know, uh, I am live on YouTube right now, too. And there's more information on the screen on YouTube, so I kind of like it a little more. But I still going to – I remember my uh, – you know, you know, I still remember uh, – the Instagram people, right? So ETH, right? We're talking a little bit about ETH. What do you want to know about ETH? Any questions, right? Any questions about ETH? Dude just said ETH. I mean, bro, what about Ethereum? Tell me the thing about it. I mean, let me talk about this. I want to talk about why everything's going to drop. And I'm going to tell you, and it's pretty simple. It's a pretty, uh, give me a quote. Give me a second here.
All right, so go back. So yeah, so um, you get the notification quicker on YouTube. Maybe that's why, but YouTube is pretty cool. I should have started this a long time ago. I kind of like it. You guys like that background with the chess pieces? <laughs> is that, let me ask you a question. You can't see it on Instagram, but is that corny or is it cool? Somebody, I want to hear you hear from you guys. Is that corny or is it cool? Like, uh, you know, I, it, I thought it was kind of cool, man. Maybe I'm showing my age here, right? <laughs> it looks cool to me, but like some of y'all younger people, tell me, is, is does it look corny? Or does it look cool? Let's hear some questions. Let's hear some answers, right? Do you guys like that background with the with the uh, chess pieces, right? I may leave it on there. I think it's cool, man, but uh, it's kind of corny. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we got a question on Instagram. Are we supposed to sell before it drops or hold it? See, that's a good question. So we got a question on Instagram. And they're like, are we supposed to sell or because of what's happened, or we're supposed to wait through the drop. Now, I can't tell you what to buy or sell. I can't do that. But what I can tell you, what I can help you with, I say, look, man, what are your long-term goals? What are your long-term goals, right? So if I'm going to, like for me, for example, I'm a, a heart, wholehearted believer in crypto, right? So if I believe crypto like that, then I'm going to hold it for five, 10 years. I'm okay with that because I know I see the potential. I see the technology behind it. I understand what it is. So, of course, I'm going to hold. I'll, I'll hold it for five, 10 years because I know eventually these countries trying to push it down are not going to be able to do so. And that goes for all crypto because the technology is so profound, so innovative, so, so you know, so, so fundamentally world changing that they won't be able to hold it down. They're not going to be able to hold it down. I don't care what they do. Right. So. If I understand that, yeah, I'm going to hold it for four, five, 10 years. Now I'm going to take profit along the way. That's smart. That's risk management. But I'm willing to hold a lot of mine for years because I know what's coming. Like if you guys have been following me for two years on Instagram and other social media platforms, you know that I told you this was coming, right? And it's not because I'm I'm a, I'm a gym, I'm like a, a psychic. I don't have a crystal ball in front of me. But the reason I can see these things is because I understand the technology, the blockchain technology that drives Bitcoin, drives most cryptos. I understand how transformative this is. Right. So if I understand, that's why it's important to understand the things that you trade in, because if you don't understand it, you don't understand, you know, you're, you really don't understand your trades. You're just trying, you're basically gambling. If you don't understand your trades, if it's a stock, you got to understand the company. Why is this stock going to go up? Is it going to, you know, how long am I going to, you got to understand all of these things. What's the business cycle in this stock? When does this stock make its money? How does this stock make its money? Now, if it's crypto, why is this particular crypto? This particular technology going to do well in the future. It can't be because of what my friend told me it would or some dude on the internet, even on me. If I'm telling you something's going to be good, I mean, you still got to do your research. You don't know. I, I could be drunk that day. Right? I could be high. You don't, I don't drink or smoke, but I could be, right? <laughs> I could be drunk. You don't know. I could, this could be full of alcohol. And I'm drunk and just saying stuff. You don't know about people you listen to on Instagram. It's always important. I don't trust no man on earth, right? I double check everybody. I double check my accountant. I double check my doctors. I get second opinions because I don't put my trust even in myself 100%. That's why I got analysts in the CNC. For people that don't know what the CNC is, our community uh, that we have, that uh, we trade stocks and cryptos. We support each other. We have free classes. Uh, if you're interested in that, click the link in my bio. But that's the reason why we have those kind of people in there because some, I look at a stock and I say, hey, man, my, hey man uh, check this out for me. You know, check it now. Now we both agree that's a good stock pick because I only trust myself 100% because you never know what your mental, you never know what a mental, your mental state is, right? You can, everybody has bias. Everybody has internal things that they, 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 they confound or confuse their decision making, right? And if somebody has a bias, a lot of times they don't even know it. Like I could have a bias, right? Because we all know I don't like XRP or Dogecoin. <laughs> well, it could be an internal bias I have on that, right? So I'm still willing to look at things. People tell me, people talk to me, whatever I'm willing to look at it to see if maybe I could be, make, you know, I could be making a mistake, right? So we got another question. CNC is a one-year payment for the year. Now the CNC, you could pay for the entire year or you could pay month to month. A year for the year, you get the, a better deal, right? In the CNC, if you guys, uh, for people that are in the CNC, I, I gotta put that link. The link is actually in my YouTube profile. Also, we did a we did a play in the CNC where we're way up on, right? 
and I'm not going to say the stock because it's still got a lot of potential, but, but I don't want to, you know, I want to make sure they get their value though, but I'm not going to say the stock, but we did a stock in there that's up like 30%, 40% already in one day, right? And it's going to continue to go up. So in the CNC, that's, that's what we did. If, let, let me get a question. If you're on the, if you're on the YouTube, if you're on the Instagram, I want you guys to drop money bags. If you're making money on that play, uh, that 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 play that we did a couple of days ago, you know, it was a certain stock. I don't want to talk. I don't want to say it, but because it still can go up, and you know, I want to save some stuff for the CNC. I know I give a lot of value. I know I talk to you guys a lot. I've made a, a lot of people a lot of money just on the lives or whatever. But I want to make sure that uh, the CNC gets reserved some things, right? So we made we did. I mean, that one stock from yesterday paid for almost the whole year for most people. So that's what we talk about. So China did block all crypto. Right. So that's kind of scary. Right. Because where's Bitcoin price at right now? Let's see where it's at. The Bitcoin price is dropping. It's at four. It's holding tight at 41, though, which is actually a good sign, man, because. It's a good sign, man, because. Uh, because it's holding tight, man. So uh, I would expect it to drop a lot more. I would expect to drop a lot more from that news, but that shows you how uh, sound the uh, Bitcoin market is right now, right? So I'm 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 actually happy that it didn't drop more. But you got to remember, the news only came out what two or three hours, four hours ago, so it could still be taken. People are still waking up across the country. Uh, people in LA are still sleeping. So sometimes it takes a while for uh for these things to uh to happen, right? So the uh, yeah, I can't tell you the stock. If people in the CNC had a stock. So that's it. Most time, like I said, I give a lot of value. Every strategy Sunday, I give you guys a stock or two that are going to do well in the next week, you know, in the, next, in the future. But some of these stocks that have the best possible returns, I got to save for the CNC because, you know, these are the people who have chosen to, to, you know, to show their support by paying a monthly fee or a yearly fee. So, you know, you got to save some of that value for them, which, uh, you know, so it's... Shout out to my mother. So he says, if they didn't like crypto, why would they block crypto? We're trying to make their own digital currency. See, Jay Hearns? Jay Hearns has a good question. I'm actually going to show this here. So Jay says, and this is on YouTube, so I'm going to repeat it for the Instagram people. So Jay says, if China did not like their crypto, did not like crypto, they see it as a speculative asset. They see it as dangerous. Why would they create their own? Well, the reason why they created their own is pretty simple. It's because, they, it's because they, they're, they're trying to get in on this. <laughs> It's not hard. I mean, this thing about it, like I tell you guys, whenever you read the news, and that's that's one of the ways we can make a lot of money. And it happens a lot in the accumulation phase of an asset, but sometimes it happens outside of it. Like a lot of times we'll see conflicting reports in the media. And they, what, what do you think this is? This is how the, the, the elite control you, right? This is how they control you, right? So crypto is bad. China has to ban crypto, right? They have to stop people from using it for money laundering and all this stuff. Now, why does China create their own crypto with the same concepts, the same technology as Bitcoin? Now, okay, look, Bitcoin's bad, right? but you can use our crypto. You know, our crypto is good. What they're doing is they're using the authority to try to trick you to come to their crypto and get rid of the competition because it's a threat to them. It's a threat. That's the reason why they're so scared of it. It's a threat. Another another one says this is a joke. This is like the 25th San Santiago says this is a joke. This is like the 25th time that China banned crypto. Exactly. Exactly, right? So China has done this every time crypto goes up. India and China have done it. They ban right when it's going up, they ban it. Now, why would they wait till it's going up? Why didn't they do this uh, two years ago? Now, th th why wouldn't okay? So Bitcoin is bad. People were using it two years ago. The price wasn't high. So it wasn't a threat. So yeah, oh, don't worry about it. Now it's going down. So as soon as it comes back up, down they they only ban it in bull runs. Now why is that? Why don't they ban it on a day when it's down twenty percent? Now they never do that. Why don't they ban it when it's down ten percent? When they never do that. When it's up and it looks like it could uh it could start to take over again, they panic and push it down. China's already done this. If China didn't do this, what China didn't do what they uh what did they do back in June? They banned Bitcoin, you know, a, cold, a, a short ban. They said banks couldn't use it. And they said that mining operations had to leave the country. So that pushed the price from 63,000 63, down to 29, right? Just in that. 
And then it took all this time to come back. As soon as it reaches a peak again, they say it again. So don't you see what they're doing? It's on it's, it's on purpose. If they did, if China didn't say these things, Bitcoin would be past 100,000 right now. And it's still going there. They're just the only thing they're doing is delaying it. They're just delaying it. They can't stop Bitcoin, but they can delay it. And what does the land give us? The land gives them time to maneuver, right? And that's what this this is what that happened back in 1718 is that the banks actually did this. Now now the countries are doing it. Right. So if something's moving up fast, countries are very slow moving operations. Right. Because there's so many moving parts, so many people. So the thing that China has to do is they have to buy time while they set up their pieces, while they get their They probably they may be buying Bitcoin secretly. You don't know. So they're doing these things, but they have to slow it down until they get their their stakes in. Right. So this is ha this has happened before in 2018. But this is with the corporation. This is with the banks. This is with the institutions. They had to slow Bitcoin down while they got their stakes. So all the negative news and stuff comes out, but they're all the while buying it. The president of El Salvador is buying Bitcoin. So we got a question from Eric. Eric said, not a question, but basically a statement. He said, decentralized currency doesn't work with a centralized authority like China. They're fundamentally opposed. That's a good point, is that they like to have control of everything. Every little piece they want control, and they can't control Bitcoin too. That's another problem that China has with Bitcoin, right? They can't control it. Nobody can. And, and that, that's the thing about Bitcoin a lot of beginners are afraid of, but it's actually one of its, be, one of its hallmarks, one of its actual benefits, right, is that there's no third party out there that can control the Bitcoin, right? What does that mean for us? That means no, there's no authority, no nothing like that. We don't even know who created it, <laughs> which a lot of times scares people. Like, who is this dude that created Bitcoin? Nobody knows who he is. Uh, Saka, um, you know, uh, you know, it's Satoshi, right? No, I don't even know how to pronounce his name, man, but I know his last name is Satoshi, right? But I've only, you know, <laughs> uh, Nakamoto, I think is his name. But uh, Satoshi, really, so we call him Satoshi a lot in the Bitcoin circles. But that's his, that's what we refer to him as, I should say. But Satoshi, he uh, it, nobody knows who he is. Nobody's ever figured out the identity of this dude. Nobody's ever figured out the identity, right? And I, I got a theory, and I'll go ahead and tell you the theory. But, I mean, it's a little crazy. It comes from my computer science background, my software engineering background. Uh, and my, you know, interest in sci-fi. So I I'm, may I'm be way off here, but I'll just tell you guys my uh, personal opinion on it or what it could be. And I say it's a, nobody really, you know, nobody really like, I've never heard this theory, but this is my theory on what it could be. And some of you guys be like, dang, Mondo's crazy, man. What is he talking about? But sometimes the craziest thing be true, man. <laughs> Give me a second here. Yeah, so the thing about it is, uh, this, this is the thing about where I think Bitcoin is, is, is what I think Bitcoin is, man. Uh, the thing about Bitcoin is, uh, so somebody just came on. We got uh, Aleski Kim. He says, "What have I missed?" Well, you you haven't missed anything, man. We just been talking about Bitcoin. We've been talking about uh, the China ban, and we've been talking about different things, you know, in regards to that. But right now, I'm just going to tell you who I think Satoshi is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta remember and i've been in bitcoin for a while like 10 years right almost almost since the beginning of it right because 2009 it came out 2011 i was in it because at the time it wasn't like i was like i just got really lucky to be honest i guess is that uh i was i was actually in grad school studying computer science with a specialization in software security and in that software security i was studying cryptology Right. At the time, I was studying cryptology, right? It just happened out in right, 2010, 2011, I was studying cryptology. So cryptology, you guys know, that's why it's called cryptocurrency because it's based in cryptology and computer science, right? Cryptology is the study of uh, computer uh, encoding messages between computer systems, an easy way to say it. So, and, and Bitcoin is encrypted, right? So I was studying that, then it just I happened to, you know, I was in these forums and stuff and I see, I heard about it, right? Way before everybody else. Uh, not everybody else, but a lot of other people. But uh, but like I said, I didn't really put a lot of money in, so I just thought it was a cool technology, right? I started putting money in 14, 15, right? So, uh, so yeah, so, you know, just looking at Bitcoin over the last 10 years, watching it, you got to remember, whoever created Bitcoin not only had to be a good computer scientist, because it took a lot of forward-thinking uh, software engineering work, software engineering uh, theories 
and understanding of a lot of theories in software engineering to unmake this work, right? And you have to also be understand uh, politics. You have to also understand uh, economics. You have to understand a lot of disciplines to make this work. Now, one man understood this, because I mean, if for some of you guys that have studied computer science or been involved in, you know, man, computer science instructors or computer science people are very one dimensional. Now, I'm not trying to be mean because that's who that, that's still what I am. Like, I don't software engineer much anymore. I don't develop and don't code anymore. But by in my heart and soul, that's what I am a software engineer. And I never that's what I'll always be. Right. Because I think like one, which actually helped benefited me a lot in this financial world. But. Software engineers, people are very, very one dimensional. And it's not that they're very, usually normally very, very intelligent, but they're one dimensional, right? They don't, they understand engineering and mathematics, you know, and that's really it, right? So, so that, that's it, right? So, and anything outside that, they're, you know, they, they, have, they have a hyper focus on this discipline. So they don't understand a lot of things outside of, which is okay, right? That means, you know, they still make a lot of money. They still do a lot of great things in the world, but a lot of times they are one dimensional. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's very, you know, it's very, uh, it's very rare that you find one that knows all of this stuff on that level, right? So now we got a dude that comes out, Satoshi, right? He creates Bitcoin. He not only stands computer science to a T, he understands economics, politics, all these other disciplines to a T. Now, one man understood that. I know he had a team working for him, but he controlled everything. He created it. He wrote the white paper. So you, you really believe one man knew that? Well, my theory, and this is a little bit out there, this is a little far out there, right? So some of you guys are gonna think I'm crazy, but I think about this. I always, you know, when I grew up, I always uh, read like like sci-fi books. Uh, mostly, I, one of my favorite disciplines, uh, not disciplines, but like subjects, uh, were computers taking over the world or space travel, right? So I always, I read books about it, both fiction and nonfiction. I always like trying to figure out when computer, when when salt, when robots and computers would actually take over, right? So. You know, in, in books, they normally show show like the robots marching into the city. You know, they always show that, right? Robots. But if a computer intelligence really wanted to take over, they could they would they would be so far ahead of us in intelligence, they wouldn't have to do that. Why they gotta do violence? They would just take the country over, they'd take the world over, do do uh, computer science means. Now, let's say somewhere in the world, somebody actually created artificial intelligence. So now the artificial intelligence is working its magic, right? So it could have created Bitcoin put it out there to destructure the world and bring more power to itself, right? Now, that would make sense. That, that, means, you, that means you could only contact Satoshi through emails. Nobody ever met him. He only talked through emails. He dis After it was created, the dude disappeared. There's no trace at all of the man who created Bitcoin, none. Where'd he go? I mean, a man that profound just disappeared off the face of the earth? Where'd he go? My theory is that artificial intelligence created it, right? And I'm serious. You know, and, and think about this, artificial intelligence created it. I mean, that means that it, 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 it artificial when artificial intelligence takes over, we won't even know it took over because that's like a that's like humans taking over an ant pile. I mean, the ants don't know that the intelligence difference is so deep that the ants don't even know the humans are there, right? Now the AI could have created itself, right? And I'm gonna tell you why. And this is this goes deeper into computer science, right? Is that once we read, there's a certain threshold, right, in which computers will eventually get smart and they'll cross over into human intelligence, right? Well, that's called the singularity. That means that once this happens, computers now have the ability to develop themselves. So as soon as that happens, remember, computers work a thousand times, a million times faster than a human. So if humans take three years to develop new incremental better artificial intelligence, once we reach what's called the singularity, and that's the point at which computers now understand how to develop themselves, boom, intelligence just explodes because they don't have the restraints that humans have. They don't have to sleep. They work a thousand million times faster and they can redevelop and redesign themselves that fast. So at that point, their intelligence will be so, so much farther than ours, we won't even be able to uh, understand what they're doing. Right. 
And this stuff is real. Stephen Hawking's the smartest man that, that was alive at the time. He has papers and he has talks in which he says that eventually computer science will take, I mean, sorry, sorry, eventually computers will take over the world. And this is the smartest man that was living at the time. He died a couple of years ago. A lot of the smartest, a lot of the thought leaders in the world in computer science talk about this, about how if we don't prepare ourselves, computers will eventually take over. They will be the powers on the earth, right? So this is not some crazy sci-fi theme. It sounds crazy, right? Just like Bitcoin sounded crazy 10 years ago, you know? <laughs> but it, it's not as crazy as it seems, right? So, so everybody says they like it more on YouTube. Yeah. Like brute force power just running the world power. What do you mean brute force? Somebody on Instagram says like brute force power or running the world power. I don't understand what that means. Brute force? So we got Aleski again. So he just bought the dip again. He has a couple of setup orders. But honestly, tired of buying dips again and again. Yeah, I know, man. It's kind of, you know, you, you do get tired. Of, I don't, I haven't bought any. The last dip I bought was 29500 right? So I posted on Instagram when I did it. But uh, but like I said, is I haven't really, like, uh, I haven't bought any dips here. Because uh, it, it does get tiring, man, trying to buy dips all the time, right? Everything I said was in Space Jam. <laughs> Yeah, I can't. The new Matrix Matrix movie actually comes out in December, man. I'm so excited about that. Now, I've never actually done like that. What do you call it? Cosplay where you dress up in a costume? I've never done that in my life. I may do it for the Matrix, man. That's really my that's probably my favorite movie series that that exists, right? I really do like that movie. And that I say that movie actually brought me into computer science because you know, before that, computer science and programming was kind of like boring and stuff. And that movie made it cool. And then, like, you know, and then it started getting cool in the early 2000s, man. So that movie kind of actually made me go into it, uh, something I probably wouldn't have went in. Yeah, I was, I was interested in it anyway. But, yeah, so I may show up as the Morpheus. I may show up as Morpheus. I don't know. I'm going to do something. <laughs> I may just, you know, I may just show up as a generic uh, uh, generic character, right, with just a long uh, trench coat on or something like that. I'm going to do it. I don't know who, though. Algae rhythm from Space Jam made. Uh... So yeah, the CNC, somebody just says on YouTube, is the CNC open to new members? Yeah, it is open to new members. We got a few spaces left this week. Uh, I think we got like nine this week. So uh, click the link in my bio and sign up if you're interested. So somebody else says YouTube is better. Oh, God, Morpheus. Yeah, so I want to talk a little bit about XRP and Dogecoin, right? Right, Because, you know, I don't really like either one of them for two different reasons. But hold on for a sec. Yeah, I don't, I don't like Dogecoin and I don't like XRP really for two different reasons. But the potential, when XRP, the potential is there. Right, but Dogecoin, like, I just don't believe in it, right? Because, but, I mean, I, I can see other people... You you it probably is gonna spike up here, so you could still make money. I just don't like it, but I mean, for those of you who don't know, uh, Dogecoin is uh used to be called Doggy Coin back you know a lot, a lot you know like seven eight years ago it was Doggy Coin it was dogs so that's why the, the logo was a dog it was a joke it was started as a joke but it became real like people start really using it but with XRP I don't like it because I just don't like that uh the nature of it you know how it's built. And the concepts behind it. But with that being said, I think XRP has a lot of potential in the price going up. And like I said, I've talked about this before on Instagram. I've talked about this before on other social media platforms. Is that uh, the reason why it's going to go up is because right now the price is being artificially held down. And what that means is that uh, right now it's off a lot of major exchanges because everybody panicked when the SEC started targeting it. So people panicked. So another thing that happened... Um, is that uh, 
the, you know, X, what happened is that the SEC Target, they, when it, they did a lawsuit with uh, XRP, so the prices dropped, right? The prices dropped down because you can't buy it. The volumes are low. So what happened then? What happened at that point, right? So now the price is, of course, they're going to drop down. Because you go back to Bitcoin at $20,000, XRP was at $5. So now Bitcoin is twice that much. XRP is a lot cheaper. XRP should actually be at like $10 right now. And remember, we were able to predict what Ethereum was going to do based on its relation to Bitcoin back in the day. So XRP is kind of like that. It's at 92 cents. It should actually be like 11 times higher than it is right now. The reason why it's so low is because of this lawsuit and because a lot of these exchanges taking it off. That's why, right? My YouTube name is Tall Guy Tycoon. Somebody says, uh, people keep talking about SHIB, S-I-A-I-B coin. I, I really haven't looked at that, so I don't know. So um, can you guys do me a favor on Instagram? I want you guys to do something for me because we're sharing powerful information here. It's going to change some people's lives. I need you guys to do me a favor. I need you guys to tag at least 10 people in your, and, let, and make sure we get this information out to as many people as possible, right? I need you guys to do a favor for me. I want you to, uh, I want you to uh, invite 10, 10 of your friends, 10 of your people you follow to this live right now and put the word shared in the comments. Yeah, because uh, people wanted me on Facebook because they could watch it on their TV. Is anybody watching on TV? I want, I'm just interested in that. I appreciate you sharing that, C-H-I-E. Uh, appreciate you sharing that, J. Ducey Break. Appreciate you sharing that, 3 uh, Nigma 21 I appreciate you sharing that, Breeder Investor. Appreciate the share, Ortiz. Appreciate the share, Brian. Appreciate the share, Dewan. Appreciate the share, Noah. Appreciate the share, It's Rodriguez. Appreciate the share, Taz. Thank you guys for doing that for me. Yeah, the YouTube platform, I like it. You can do a lot more with it, but uh, I think I think Instagram is more convenient for people. So, hey, Armando, so why create artificial intelligence if it would be doomed in the end? That's a good point. So, somebody on Instagram asked me a good question. So they said, why would somebody create artificial intelligence if it's going to doom us in the end? And I'll tell you right now, capitalism. <laughs> because sometimes capitalism, it, it, I love capitalism, not saying I'm against it, but sometimes capitalism is kind of, you know, it's, it, it will lead to stuff like this happening, right? Because there's such a big financial incentive for the first person who creates artificial intelligence that it's almost unstoppable for it to happen, right? It's, it's just it's because the financial, like I said, the financial, whoever creates that is going to be a multi-billionaire, right? And about 20 years later, yeah, the world may be destroyed, <laughs> but or may not, right? Because we always think about, our, you know, computers taking over as being evil because that's what all the, you know, popular media have shown us. But it could end up with a better world, right? It could end up in a better world. So somebody just gave me a job interview on, on <laughs> so on my live, right? So. LinkedIn user, hey, Armando, drop a shout out for me. I'm hiring a software development leaders here at AWS. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's Amazon Web Services. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I, I kind of wanted to work there at one point. <laughs> Somebody from LinkedIn has just sent me a, a job interview request right on live for Amazon Web Services. What would AI have to gain from creative currency it can use? Now, the AI, the thing about that, we'll never be able to truly understand the goals and the methods of an AI system, right? Because we, it's like an ant trying to discover, understand what a human's doing. You can't understand. It's too much of an intelligence gap. But we can infer maybe that it's some kind of way, because money is, a, is one of the ways that the world is controlled. Think about this. What is the number one way that everything in the world is controlled? 
right? Think about this. It's not military. It's not force. It's money. Money controls everything in this world, right? So now if they can replace the currency in which they control, now they have to control. You see what I'm saying? I appreciate you sharing that on LinkedIn, uh, Jason. Thank you. Like I said, the CNC is reopened. Uh, so like I said, the CNC is a group in which we we got big plays. And then we actually, we got a lot of, uh, we made a big play in there yesterday. We're up like, what's Fernell? I'm, oh, I almost said it. I almost said to the, the stock, but <laughs> I didn't quite say it. It's up another 12% today. So how much are we up in the CNC right now? 50, 60% on that play from yesterday? That, that one play made up for the entire year uh, of paying for it, right? So that's what we do in the CNC. CNC is a Discord group in which we all work together. We got analysts. We got instructors. We got a lot of things going on. We, they help, we help each other grow. We make these kind of plays, right? I didn't say the whole thing. So we make these kind of plays, right, that, uh, that make it, that, you know, like this play, for example, we're up, what, 50 60% two days? So if you put a, let's say you put $1,000 into it, you paid for the whole year right there. So everything else is profit. And that's what we do. Because anytime I give you guys some a class or a course or any kind of discount, I'm going to make sure you get that value back. I'm going to make sure you get the value, right? But you're going to get that value back regardless, right? And that's what we do, right? So that's what I'm saying. It's almost, it's, it's a pure, it's almost an investment, right? And a lot of people like, they don't understand. They don't want to get into it. But for people that are in there, we understand that. We understand that you have to be in these groups. It cuts a lot of time. It cuts a lot of effort because you got a community out there growing, doing things with you. You got a community out there doing your research with you. You got people to keep you in check, keep you motivated, keep you continuing to make, keep you uh, uh, constantly focused on risk management, right? So we got a lot of people saying YouTube is better. Uh, if you want to get into the CNC, click the link in my bio. Let me put the link here in uh, in YouTube. I don't think, I think I got my, where's that link in my YouTube? I'll put it up here. Okay, anybody can join the CNC. Man, that was a good play we did in there, right? So, I mean, I'm glad. I, but you remember, you got to, now we're up 50, 60%. Now it's up 12, man, it's up 13% today. It was up 30% yesterday. So now we got to start being worried about, you know, you have to keep an eye on risk management, right? You got to keep an eye on risk management because we're up for, for what, 40, 50% now. Now is the time when you need to start watching out for your money, right? Because you don't want to end up losing money in this trade, <laughs> right? So somebody says, somebody on Instagram said, this is what somebody on YouTube says right now, if you're on YouTube. It says, I was hesitant in the beginning, but after I joined CNC, I made more than $10,000 in two months, right? And that's all for a $39.99 price, right? But it's not, it's so much, it's more about the create, changing your money mindset, changing how you see money, because you got to group with like-minded people. People become friends in there. We have events that people show up to. So it's a lot of, Great things in that uh, in that community. So we got uh, D. Johnson says, keep doing your thing. I mess with you. You're a solid person. I appreciate you, D. Johnson. Crypto ban. Yeah, China banned crypto. For those of you who are joining late, yeah, China did ban crypto, right? But, uh, but yeah, so we'll, we'll just have to watch and see where is it at right now is any let me see where it's at now so bitcoin is still holding tight at about 41 now it's actually recovering a little bit so i the thing about it is that i think that the law of diminishing returns is going to take effect here right so the thing about it is that you got to understand that that's why it's important to understand patterns in all things right the world is run by patterns patterns all around us so it's why important to pay attention to the pattern so one particular pat pattern or uh concept i guess is the law of diminishing returns. And what that means is that if I do something, like something financial, right? 
I'll like, let's say like for example, I'll I'll figure out a new ad revenue source. So I'll put a lot of money in there and I'll make a million dollars the first time, right? So if I do it again, the same exact thing again, the law of diminished returns takes place. And the next time I may not make a million, I'm only make 700,000. And every time I do it, the return gets, it, it takes the same amount of effort, but the return is less and less, right? So if we reverse that, so every time China comes out with negative news, the first time, yeah, it hits hard. But people are getting immune to it now, right? So the next time it don't hit as hard. The third time it don't, that's what I'm saying. These countries are going to run out of things they can do, right? They're going to run out of it because the last time it hit hard down 20, 30%. Now, three, four months, five months later, they ban it again. It's not as hard. If they try to do something again. It's not going to be as hard. Eventually, they're going to run out of things they can do, right? That's the law of diminishing returns. And actually, in New York, we got a, on the 30th of October, which is the day for, I know it's the day for Halloween, but that's the only way we can get that studio available. We're going to do a, a live uh, seminar. It's going to be 360. That means that it's going to be screens all around us, all in 360 format. So we're going to be sitting in there. I'm going to be in the middle. I'm going to teach. And we're going to, the whole class is based on patterns in finance, in stocks, in life in general, financial patterns that exist all around us. So we're going to be able to understand things like the law of diminishing return, market cycles in stocks and crypto. You know, different stock chart patterns that exist. You know, so a lot of times it's easy. If you understand these patterns, the intraday market patterns when it comes to stocks, it's a lot of patterns in all of these things that can help us see what's happening and remove that fear and that uh, emotion from our trading because these patterns are all around us. And that's what that's the whole class is just going to be on patterns. That's it. Patterns in real estate, patterns in finance. Patterns in user behavior, everything, just a whole a whole two-hour session on patterns in finance, right? With these graphs showing up on the wall in the 360 format, right? Oh, the whole room's gonna be dark. It's gonna be a crazy webinar. I mean, crazy seminar. It's gonna be in person in New York City on the 30th of October. So if you're in New York, DM me and I'll get you the link so you can go ahead and sign up for that. I haven't made it live yet though. I'm going to start doing a show on YouTube every, uh, every like a certain day. Like I'm just jumping on now, seeing how it works. But from now on, I'm going to start doing it like uh, a show, right? So I'm going to do it like, I may have, I may ask some, for people from the CNC, I'll allow you to call in. So only CNC members will be able to call. They have the number and we'll answer qu questions live. We'll do this and we'll do it for an hour, maybe like on Wednesday mornings or something, you know? So I'm going to, I'm going to come up with a show and we're going to do it from like market. We're going to do it from like nine to 10. Uh, every like Wednesday or something like what what time do you guys feedback from the Instagram feedback from YouTube? What time do you think I should do a show like that? Like what time is best for you guys in the morning, nine to 10 uh, in the evening after the market, five to six. What do you guys think would be a great time and day for a show like that? So after six weekends, weekends, nobody ever shows up, man. I ain't doing no weekends no more, except Strategy Sunday. Maybe at 12 o'clock on Wednesdays, Monday morning. I can't do Monday morning. It's too tight to, uh, I got to show that night, so I can't run myself too thin. Five to six. Maybe I'll do it like five to six on like, uh, like Wednesday or something. I think it's more exciting if the market's actively trading, though. After market, maybe after the market on uh, on like Wednesdays. Bitcoin is rebounding a little bit. It's at 42,000. Friday morning, maybe Friday morning. I'm going to send out a poll. You need a whiteboard for your YouTube to teach things you preach. So people learn better with examples. I do got a whiteboard over here. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do a whiteboard like uh I can share my screen and it'd be a whiteboard. So maybe I'll look into that. That's what you guys are paying for these badges for. I only got six dollars today. The badges are to help me buy things for this, this studio and stuff that I'm building, right? So like if I'm going to, I can get a whiteboard, I can get a whole whiteboard kit to where I can draw and do whiteboard stuff. But like I said, is that that's what I use that money for. We can do whiteboard Wednesday if you want to, but uh, I'm up, up to you guys to help me buy this equipment, right? So if you want to, 
you're interested in a whiteboard Wednesday or something like that, you know, click, the, you know, you got to get those badges in, man. We only got like seven badges today. Nobody's buying badges. I guess I'm not talking about it as much either. Yeah, I'm going to get a whiteboard on the computer. Probably I'm going to get one of those boards with a thing, but I have to, I don't want to, I don't want, every time I ever try to get a cheap one like that, it never works. So I'm going to get a, a better, a good one, right? Appreciate the badge breather investor. No badges today because the market's down. <laughs> Why China ban crypto? Well, we talked about that a couple of times. So just re just review this uh, this live, and we'll talk. We, you know, we tell you why. When you come to Los Angeles, I'm gonna try to do it. I may be able to do it in. Uh, so DM me and we'll talk about it. I may be able to do it. Uh, let me see, because I got to be in New York on the 27th and the 30th. Let me look at my calendar, because I want to kind of I want to go to I want to go to LA. I've been meaning to get out there. So let me see. So next month, I got, I'm being in New York on the 27th and back on the 30th. Probably try to be in Chicago or Houston on the 28th or 29th. So maybe I could be in LA on the 25th or the 26th the next month. Or maybe on the 24th on a Sunday. So we'll look into that. Uh, so DM me and maybe we could talk about it. What you guys want to talk. If you're in LA and you want, you're interested in that, just DM me and we'll see what we can do. Sorry, guys, we don't have any more questions. What are you up to in New York? Well, I got two. One of them is a free, con one of them is a free conference on the 27th. On the 30th, it's a, it's a different one. It's that 3D one. Uh, and I'll post more information about that soon. Yeah, so somebody put a question. Are you still doing that Clarksville meetup next month? And what she's talking about is the Clarksville, Tennessee. Uh, no, nah, man, the thing, I tried that, man. There's like three people filled out the form, man. So I can't. I can't, I would actually, I would have done that one at no charge. Just, you know, because I could have went to Austin Pieces, I'm an alumni and got a pretty cheap room over there. So it wouldn't really cost me nothing. So I would have done it. But it's no, it was like three people that signed up. I can't go to Clarksville and do all that stuff for three people. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, unless you guys want to help me get more people uh, and get the word out there. If, if you guys want to help me, DM me on Instagram. If you're in Clarksville, Tennessee and you want me to come, I need some kind of help on the ground there, right? Because... The funny thing about Clarksville is that's where I was raised. And that's kind of, I love Clarksville. Now, before I get into that, I want to say I love Clarksville. It made me the man I am today. If it wasn't for that, that uh, city, I never probably would have went to college because th it just happened to be a, a, a city in that town that had a computer science program. And now if that college, that university wasn't in that city, I probably just would have would start working at train, which was a, 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 you know, air conditioner factory. Never would just deal with everybody else there. But because the school was right there, I couldn't afford to go off for of school. So just, I just got lucky that the school, the university, a state university was in the same city I grew up in. So then I just went over to the university and, you know, and I was able to do well from then on that point forward. But if it wasn't for that, I never would have learned about computer science. I'd probably just be like a supervisor or something at, over at Train, the air conditioner plant or some other plant down there. So I'm glad that that was there. But on the other hand, people in Clarksville are a little bit backwards, man. You know, and, and I don't know if it's, Backwards financially, I should say. I don't want to say, because they're good people in Clarkson. I'm not going to say that. But with financially, right, it's like something weird about the mindset of people there. I don't understand it. It's like they're not really focused. Maybe they're just focused on other things. I and mean, it's not nothing wrong with that. I'm not putting it down. But it's like people aren't focused on financial growth or career growth there. It's like just, you know, it's more like it's kind of like people are just happy. Right. And that's good. It's nothing wrong with that. But people are just happy. Right. So, <laughs> so I mean. So it's kind of hard for me to do things there uh, because nobody's going to show up. You know, I could put the same effort, go to New York, L.A., Houston, or uh, or Chicago, and you're going to have 100, 150 people there, right? So, I mean, I, I don't mind doing it. Like I said, I wouldn't even charge. I would take, because I'm from there and I love that city, I would take the cost myself. But on the other hand is that I can't just show up and only be three people there. Somebody says, uh, it's a military town. And there's a lot of Amish people there. That's true. <laughs> so, I mean, 
unless we can get the word out, man. Like if you get somebody with somebody knows somebody works with Austin P and we can get maybe out to the students there, I'll show up. But uh maybe I should contact Austin P if somebody that knows Austin P people. I don't know. So um so yeah, like I said, um I hope you guys have a great day. I appreciate you joining this. And like I said, I'm gonna try to do this on a more a better schedule. Uh maybe like Wednesday, like Wednesdays and Fridays or Tuesdays and Thursdays or something. So like I said, I hope you guys have a great night. Great day. Have a great weekend. I'll see a lot of you guys on Strategy Sunday. Uh, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.